It's been a long time. What's up, candidates? Good to see you again. We're happy to be back here. Uh, who's got the first question? Right here. Uh, for Amanda first, uh, of course, this is a, another huge fight for you. We were just watching the countdown show before, and you said in there that you feel you can stop Irina at any time. Uh, what about this matchup makes you so confident in that? Honestly, I really stop her. No doubt in my mind. This belt is Brazilian, this belt is mine. So, I'm, I'm like completely like ready for this fight. You know, she's a better fighter than Juliana for sure. You know, she's gonna bring the challenge. And, and I'm ready for this battle, man. It's like, I'm just like ready than ever. So she's gonna bring the challenge and I'm gonna be ready for answer. So you guys have the greatest main event ever. And I know, Amanda, how you feel about that first Juliana fight. It was kind of an anomaly, but if you're saying she's better than Juliana, uh, do you feel like she brings a certain degree of danger then, knowing that Juliana was able to win one fight? Definitely. You know, this girl can knock people out, you guys saw. And me too. So how excited I can be, you know what I mean? We're going to really punch each other, try to kick each other's ass. So I hope you guys have a good time. And for Irene, um, you had said yesterday at Media Day that this isn't kill or be killed, this is just kill or kill. Can you explain a little bit more of that quote and the meaning behind it? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not here just to see what happens. I'm here definitely for the win. It's kill or kill for me, it's not kill or die. So I'm going to, to do anything to win this belt tonight. And knowing that we just saw Amanda lose a fight just two fights ago, uh, what have you been able to take away from that just from a tactical and confidence perspective? Oh, well, Amanda is dangerous everywhere. I, I, I can take a lot of that fight. I know she wasn't at her 100%. I know she came back better than ever, and I'm expecting her best version in this time. And just one more for Canada's Mike Ballot. Uh, Mike, you've said this is a, a dream come true to be able to compete here in front of the Canadian crowds. This is just a sliver of what it's going to be like Saturday night. Uh, can you just explain what the emotions are for you right now? Canada, what's going on, baby? We're back. Can you feel it? Oh, man. Coming out here, hearing all you guys cheering, feeling the energy, feeling this Crowd behind me, feeling 35 million Canadians behind me. This is the energy I've want, been dying for, man. My whole career, I've been wanting this. I've been waking up for the last eight weeks, dreaming of this noise, dreaming of you rowdy fans getting behind us. I can't wait for Saturday night, baby. Question for the former champion, Charles Oliveira. Obviously, we've seen you come off of losses before, but it's been a long time since we've seen you kind of rebound to get back into the win column. How is the approach to this fight different from your previous losses that you've tried to, you know, erase? Charles, no passado a gente já viu você voltar de derrotas e conseguir muitas vitórias. Como que difere agora, dessa vez, voltar dessa derrota para começar uma nova seguida de vitória? Olha, de verdade, o leão é mesmo ferido, ele continua sendo o leão. Eu, eu renasci de novo das cinzas. Eu tô aqui de novo. Vou mostrar para você que eu posso ser campeão mais uma vez. A wounded lion is still a lion. I feel that I was reborn from the ashes. I'm a champion. I'll show you that. Yesterday at Media Day, Benil seemed very confident in his abilities to, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with you and maybe even best you in the grappling department. So I'm curious, what do you make of Benil's skill set in the octagon when you do face off Saturday? Ontem o Benil falou algumas vezes que ele é capaz de te neutralizar, especialmente no chão. Então, o que, que você tem para dizer sobre as habilidades do Benil? Olha, o Benil é um cara duríssimo, merece todo o respeito do mundo, vem de uma escola gigantesca. Mas olha assim, de verdade, com todo o respeito do mundo, eu não estou preocupado com aquilo que o Benil vai fazer, e sim com aquilo que eu vou fazer. É tempo ruim o tempo inteiro. You know, Benil's a tough guy. Just a, a, a guy that comes from a great school training, a tough guy, and deserves all the respect in the world, but all the respect. I'm not worried about what Benil can bring. I'm Benil, what I can do. It's bad, a bad time all the time. Question for Benil. Similar question. At Media Day, you're obviously confident in your abilities against Charles. Is it something you see in Charles' game, or are you just so confident in your own skill set when you enter the octagon? 
I'm, uh, I'm confident in my skill set. I'm, I'm confident in what God has given me. I, uh, I recognize how good Charles is. It's not something I see in him that's a flaw. I just, I just believe in myself and what God has given me. I, I've said this before. In my opinion, Charles, second best lightweight of all time, you know, right behind Habib. But I, it doesn't matter for me. I, I want to fight the best guys in the world. Finally, one for Dana White. Uh, both Charles and Benil seem pretty confident that a win on Saturday, they'll get the shot against Islam in October in Abu Dhabi. Is that the case? The winner will fight Islam for the title. I have no idea. We'll see how the fight goes on Saturday, but yeah, it obviously makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, right here, right now, makes a lot of sense. We'll see what happens. This is a question for Dan Ige. Dan, we know that Nate can brawl on a dime, as he said yesterday, but do you think you have the cleaner striking? Um, first of all, I just want to thank you guys and show a moment of gratitude for all the fans that came out tonight. I'm pumped up, man. This is my dream, just to be sitting here, first time fighting on a main card on a pay-per-view. I'm feeding off this dude's energy over here. I'm just pumped to be here. Uh, to answer your question, um... I'm looking to go out there and put on a clean kill. I'm going to go out there and look for the knockout and know what you guys want to see, and I'm knocking this dude out. Is this the sort of fight where you know no matter what happens, you're getting into a scrap, you're getting into a proper war? 100%, dude. Nate, Nate Landwehr is one of the best in the world. He, he comes to fight every single time. He's on a three-fight win streak. He deserves this, and, uh, and I'm, ta I'm not taking the guy lightly. I fought the best of the best, and I'm here to you know, prove that I am one of the best in the world. For you, Nate, we know you come to put on a show, but Dan Ege has shown that he's as tough as they come. But for you, who do you believe, out of yourself and Dan, is the tougher man going into the cage on Saturday night? Hey, man, I've been waiting to say, Nathan Trey's at the damn press conference. Let's go. Make some noise. Tomorrow night, the next night, I'm dreaming the same thing. We're going to finish this man Saturday night, and I'm going to get the job done. I'll be the first man in the octagon to finish this man. No problem. How do you see that finish coming? I'm going to try to kick him in the head. <laughs> for Eric Anders, and this is a, a fight your opponent has asked for and wanted for a while. For you, does the mentality have to be, I'm coming in to be, say, be careful what you wish for? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, he got a death wish, you know. Y'all know what I come to do and what I bring to the table, and I plan on getting him out of there. And for you, Mark Andre, what is it about this fight that makes you feel you can come in and show your home country what you can do and why is this the fight that you wanted today? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Canada. It feels so good to be back. Um, yeah. I like the energy. Um, super excited to be back. Uh, and also, I've been asking for this fight for a long time. So now I feel like it's the right time. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I feel like I'm a complete, another complete fighter right now. And it's just time to show everybody that what I've made of. And I have the perfect uh, opponent to show you guys. So I can wait. Question for Benil. Uh, and I'm sorry if this leads to more booze. During media day yesterday, Charles said, and of course this is a translation, uh, regarding the Islam fight, I didn't watch it, it wasn't me, I wasn't there. You don't learn anything new when you don't watch something. Is there anything you can gleam about Charles' mindset of having him, you know, not seen that fight, not thinking about that fight? Let's see. Charles has, uh, man, he has so many fights in the UFC, right? So he's been through this, he knows what he's doing. Um, as far as not wanting to uh, watch the fight, I'm sure it's something uh, he's thought about and he's thought it through. So if he's sure about it, uh, you know, he's sure about it. I, obviously, I've always watched all my losses and I've, uh, and I've been very um, obsessive, obsessive about it, but maybe, maybe he's smarter than I am. Just one more for you, Benil. Um, you know, you said that you were given the, your, the UFC's word that you're getting the next title shot. Was that response from Dana at all concerning for you? No, I'm not, not concerned at all. Okay, happy to hear it. One for Dana. Uh, Raquel Pennington is here as the backup for the main event. 
Obviously, Juliana was supposed to fight Amanda. She got injured. In your estimation, is Raquel or Juliana at the front of the line for the winner of this fight? I have no idea. I have no idea. We'll see how it all plays out. Hey there. Uh, this one for, for Dan Ige. I see your I see your sandwich between two Canadians right now. Is that why you're repping the Vancouver Grizzlies jersey? Let's go, baby! Stand up! No, it's just it's my coach's jersey. I stole it from him. Fair enough. Uh, this one for Mike. Mike, yesterday you talked a lot about visualization. Um, is this how you envisioned this moment, and what are you envisioning uh, for Saturday? I've been in this room for the last eight weeks already, man. My body just hasn't made it here yet. So finally in this room, I feel so comfortable in here, man. I, he, yeah, man, 905, baby, let's go. Man, I just feel like so privileged to represent this country. Like, can anyone, does anyone feel differently? This is our show Saturday night, man. Like this is for us. That's why we're here. This is for us, this is our return. This is Canadian MMA's return to the UFC, baby. This is our coming out party. I'm just the one spearheading it, the last one holding the fort down. I'm coming here Saturday night to protect the house, baby. A question for Adam in the midst of all of that. Obviously, Mike's the Canadian. You're from just down the road across the border in, in Eugene, Oregon. Is it nice to come up here? You're gonna have a vocal contingent? in the house on Saturday night? And I apologize for bringing on the booze. Hey, my boys are rowdy. Let's go. <laughs> booze are like music to my ears. This is a, this is a typical Adam Fugit fight right here. I'm ready to go to war, ready to go the distance. Booze or cheers, I don't care. And another one for Mike. Obviously, you've spoken this week pretty deliberately about going out, finishing Adam, continuing to build your stock. What's next after this? What's the next step for you? I have nine wins in this sport. I have nine first-round stoppages. Four by knockout, five by submission. I don't need to tell you guys I'm getting the stoppage. It's pretty clear based on my history, that's what I'm here to do. Right? I'm not a guy who outpoints guys. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to barely win and win on paper. I'm here to put guys away. Saturday night, that's what I'm gonna do again. We'll deal with after that once that's done. For, uh, for Amanda, I mean, you were introduced here tonight as the consensus greatest of all time. At this point in your career, what do you feel that you have left to prove? Honest, the competition that is driving me forward. I say in the whole media, same thing, you know? I love being here. I love this moment. I love the process, you know? So I born to do this. I born to have this two belt. So this is what I'm driving forward and be here for you guys today. This is all about the competition. Thank you. And uh, one for Benil. Benil uh, at Media Day, Charles said, you want a war, war has come. He's called himself, you know, a lion, wounded is still dangerous. Do you see him as more dangerous coming off a loss? I, I mean, it's Charles Oliveira, man. He's dangerous. He's always dangerous. He's always prepared. And like, I'm not gonna go in there thinking, oh, you know, he lost his last fight. He's gonna come in here soft. Come on, man. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a child anymore. I've, I've, I've grown up. I, I understand who Charles Oliveira is, and I know what I gotta do. And I'm gonna go in there and do it. Who's next? Right here. Go ahead. This question's for Adam. Um, Mike Malott is obviously known as a first round finisher. Regardless of how this play, of how this fight goes, does it get past the first round? We can't all win them in the first round. That's for sure. Uh, I know that lesson well. I'm prepared to take them into the third round, drown them. And, uh, 
Question for Mike Malott. I know you got a, a couple of new fans that are coming into town to see you this weekend. So uh, just give us a preview of what we're going to see Saturday. Hey, man. You know, he's a tough guy. He's a solid fighter. But I've been fighting solid fighters my entire career, and I've been putting them all away. Nobody in this company's made it past five minutes with me yet. He might be the guy to make it past the first round, but I got a surprise for you. I get better as the fight goes on. I'm not a first round fighter. I get better. I get charged. When this fight goes deep, you're gonna see me dig deep. And if it doesn't, we're gonna not even sweat again, baby. It doesn't matter to me which one happens. The only thing I know for sure is 10 wins, 10 stoppages. And then a uh, quick question for both Dan Ige and uh, Nate the Train. You guys had kind of said yesterday at Media Day that this one might steal the show. It's going to be hard to do that over the Canadian fighters on the card. But could this be one of those fights where the guy that shoots first, the other guy's going to have the bragging rights? Go ahead, big guy. Oh, I'm definitely shooting quick. I'm going to take him down and submit him. I am taking this dude's soul on Saturday night. Let's Let's go. Go. I'm gonna keep coming. The monster's here. Okay. We got one more. Who's next? No, no more. That's it. All right. We're gonna uh, rip their shit out of here. We're gonna square these guys off. Thanks for showing up tonight, Canada. We'll see you tomorrow at the weigh-ins.